Well, first of all, thank thank you, Doug, for organizing this. Um, it is uh, it is really wonderful to welcome really all of our colleagues um, back to the telephone. Uh, it's been many many weeks now since we have had our various uh, integrated health services research subcommittee teleconferences. Those went on for several months, from uh, December through to about April. And um, today is, um, and, and first of all, the output or, or the outcome of those teleconferences was just a tremendous amount of leadership and um, additional vision and thoughts and feedback to, uh, to an integrated health services research agenda. Today is really an opportunity for us to learn more about what's happened since our series of teleconferences to really seek further input from our colleagues on the line and uh, from those who will be joining us uh, again uh, tomorrow. We're sort of repeating this, um, this opportunity uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon again. And at this point, I would like to take this opportunity to really thank, uh, to thank you, Shu, for your, your vision uh, and your commitment to an integrated health services research agenda to welcome you to this virtual podium and to really turn things over to you. Thank you, Elaine. So, uh, Elaine and Doug, both thank you so much for organizing this. Uh, it's, uh, it's very helpful that you've done this because it gives us a, a good forum to communicate with everyone. So, thank you, everybody, for joining this meeting. Um, and as uh, uh, Elaine said, this is to uh, give you an update on what's happening. So, I'm going to go plunge straight into it. Um, and then I would welcome any questions or comments, anyone from uh, from anyone. Okay, so um, <clears throat> first of all, we want to talk about where we started and where we are now and where we are going. And uh, also to let you know that a workshop has been planned for the 1st and 2nd of October. Um, and uh, this is going to be held in, list. Hey, remind me, where is it going to be held? It's in Ottawa. It's in Ottawa. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so the background, as you recall, is that we wanted to look at a way of improving the integration of uh, research and health services uh, in this country. Um, and we looked at it in three ways. One was vertical, second was horizontal, and the third was 3D integration. And the vertical was meant to be integrating from primary to tertiary care and policy, the horizontal to look at how we catalyze uh, information or evidence into practice and outcomes improvement, and then the third dimension is to how do we um, incent our pediatric hospitals to be truly research hospitals supporting both basic and clinical research and to extend that culture and capacity to the community. <laughs> now, why this is to be a signature initiative? Because it's a transformational kind of uh, a change that we're talking about. It's a partnership that engages the health system. Uh, it will leverage significant partner funding. Um, it's innovative in that um, nobody else is actually doing this right now. Uh, it enables all pillars of research. It's uh, good timing in the government is receptive uh, at this time to integrating health services. Uh, and it's got the endorsement not only from CHR Central, but also many institutes We should very much like to participate in this kind of an initiative. So we've done a couple of things till now. Uh, first of all, we had a series of conversations and consultations with our community across the country. Um, and then we had a plenary at the last CAFC meeting uh, called Challenging Culture and Creativity, and we had a number of speakers come to speak to us about this whole issue. <clears throat> and then we had uh, three advisory committees that were set up um, that included our constituencies to look at this issue in a bit more detail and to give us advice on how we should be proceeding. And I want to thank all the three committees. They did a tremendous amount of work, and it was a very good uh, result. They gave us very good reports that we will be following um, to, to as we move forward. We then began to talk to the other CIHR institutes uh, and to try and get interest from them and to involve them. And CIHR also reminded us that for signature initiatives, it cannot be led by one institute. It has to be co-led by a number of institutes. Uh, we also presented our first draft case to uh, the CIHR, <coughs> and uh, they liked it. So we are proceeding now with uh, the next steps. We had consultations and outreach with many of the uh, people in our community, including CEOs, uh, provincial authorities, foundations, uh, NGOs, pediatric chairs of Canada, etc. So we've been reaching out to make sure that everybody is informed about this whole idea. 
Um, and we've also issued a number of training uh, planning grants so that um, our community can begin to access these planning grants uh, to bring people together to look at uh, uh, um, discussions around this whole uh, topic. At current, <clears throat> at this time, we have um, four, three other institutes that are co-leading this. So we have a total of four institutes that are co-leads. We thought that we shouldn't expand it beyond that because then there'd be too many people trying to co-lead this thing and it becomes too complicated. So we have Phil Sherman from the Institute of Nutrition, Metabolic and uh, Diabetes. We have uh, Robin Tamlin from the Institute of Health Services and Policy Research, and Yves Jonet from the Institute of Aging. <clears throat> And uh, as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at the different components of integrating uh, health and clinical uh, uh, services and research. So uh, one of the things that we started looking at was what is the population that we want to affect? And there was a general consensus among the co-leads that uh, we should begin by focusing on high system users. Uh, that would include with medical complex. Uh, complexities and potentially um, even adults with high complexities. Now, uh, this population is characterized by complex care needs and frequent contact with the health system and stands to benefit significantly when we improve the integration of health services. So that's one of the reasons why we started looking at this group. Now, there may be other um, targets that we want to identify as we go along, uh, but this was the first group that everybody could agree on that said uh, it makes sense to start looking at this, uh, this area. Um, the, uh, the other institutes were very much in favor of expanding uh, beyond just looking at children um, to also include um, other uh, age groups in this initiative. And since this is a, a co-led and joint uh, sort of a initiative, uh, we agreed that uh, we would open it up to include uh, not just children, uh, but also adults. Now, having said that, everyone was uh, recognized that when we first made this proposal, um, we asked for it to be focused on the children um, because it's an area that um, is doable uh, instead of trying to make it too broad and too big and, and becomes not doable. And so um, I think we all agreed that we would try to focus as much of this on the children as possible uh, while including the other parts of the uh, chronologic age spectrum um, so that in future we can build on that as we go forward. Now, it's likely that because of that, that um, the two ages that are most vulnerable and have a lot of high system users will really be the children and the aged population. And so I think you will see that um, uh, reflected uh, in the RFA as we move forward. So the vision for the Integrated Health and Research Services Initiative is to achieve a lifelong and family-centered approach to support the care for Canadians and to ensure that they receive the right care, the right place, and the right time. Pretty uh, motherhood statement. Um, the goal is to shift away from episodic treatment of acute illness events towards the provision of a coordinated continuum of services. And this requires horizontal integration of services within sectors of care and vertical integration across sectors of care um, so that we can look at uh, the different parts of the care system uh, in a continuous uh, spectrum. The questions driving research today require research hospitals to consider developing a broader role as knowledge networks that reach from the laboratory and clinic to influence people in their homes, workplaces, and communities. So this is actually a fundamental shift in how we view research and how it's linked to the provision of healthcare services, uh, and also with the values that would support and underpin a spirit of inquiry. And so the idea is that we would like every person that engages with the health system both at a hospital as well as a community level, to have the right and responsibility to participate in clinical studies, to take part in research protocols, and to allow their data to be used for future research initiatives and to access the results and outcomes of the research. So where do we go from here? First of all, uh, we have established an inter-institute advisory group that would include representatives from our advisory group as well as from the other three institutes that are co-leads. And this group is, uh, will start meeting next week. We will charge this group with coming together to bring all the different ideas from different institutes together, and we've already formed ours uh, at ITSI through our three committees, so that they can come on with a consensus about what we're going to be doing in terms of the objectives and the plan moving forward. 
Um, we have our next meeting of the co-lead scientific directors and their institute staffs uh, this week at CIHR. And uh, we will be having regular meetings so that we can ensure that we have a, 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 a united uh, sort of uh, framework moving forward. Um, and during our meeting this week, we will finalize um, the objectives and the agendas for both the initiative as well as for the workshop that we are planning for. The workshop is planned for the 1st and 2nd of October. Uh, it will be in Ottawa, it will be by invitation. And we want to we'll ensure that um, all our uh, advisory board members will be there as well as uh, recommended uh, stakeholders in the community, uh, including both researchers as well as uh, potential government partners and funders. Now, uh, during this time period, we will also be reaching out to stakeholders and partners as we firm up uh, the whole initiative in terms of the concepts, etc., so that we can begin to inform them and to engage them uh, prior to the workshop and also during the workshop in order to ensure that uh, both our communities uh, as well as funders and, and, and the government will be working together as we move forward. Now, following the workshop, we will be preparing the full business case um, for presentation to CIHR, hopefully in the late fall of this year, um, to take it through the process there. And if it's approved, and we can then move forward with um, rolling out the RFA next year. Now, the workshop objectives will be to present an overview of this initiative, the goals, objectives, and intended outcomes, provide an opportunity for stakeholders and partners to network and to ensure that uh, their perspectives and needs are fully integrated into the proposal, to discuss the knowledge translation strategy, capacity building and resource needs, facilitators and barriers to inform the initiative, to discuss present and future infrastructure needs, and also how will we measure success in this initiative, um, both in terms of evaluation and measurement. Okay. So that's kind of where we are right now. Um, I think that we've uh, done a great deal already. We've achieved quite a lot, um, and many ideas have been put on the table. Um, if the experience of the workshops from uh, other initiatives that we have been involved uh, with um, give us any lessons, uh, there will be a great deal more that will come out at the workshop as well. And uh, we will certainly have some speakers to speak to us as well as a lot of discussion there uh, as we move forward. So at this time, it is actually looking pretty positive. Uh, we've had some certainly positive responses from uh, different provincial governments and funding agencies that we've been talking to. So I think it's actually promising um, and that the funding is going to be there um, as we begin to unfold uh, the, the RFA. So I'm just going to stop there uh, and uh, to invite any questions.